Hello guys and welcome back. So in the last section we saw how we can use cards that are provided by the Material Design Bootstrap uh, library to us. In this section we are going to talk about drop downs and inputs and forms as well. So let's start with uh, the drop downs. Now I'm going to create a component again for this and I'll just call this forms because we are going to essentially use everything that we have regarding forms in here. And let's just close this, open the app routing module and add a path to that. I'll call this forms and uh, the component that I want it to load is the forms component, which again is something that I'll have to import from its respective path. I'll close this one, close the buttons and cards. In the headers component, I'm gonna add a link to the forms route so this is going to be forms and forms again let's save this and go back to the application so we should now see the form section here if i go form works uh, gets loaded up on the screen now let's um, close this one close this file as well and open up the forms section here I'll just get rid of the sidebar and the terminal and let's go to the drop down section here. These are the drop downs that are provided by Angular both material as well as uh, basic drop downs. So material drop down uh, as it seems comes as a part of the material pro component. So that is something that won't that we won't really be able to use but apart from that the basic drop down that comes as a part of this package uh, is pretty straightforward basic drop down so we just copy the markup paste in here and uh, we should see a basic drop down like so pretty good right then the material drop down comes as a part of the <coughs> pro package we also have a split button drop down. So let's try that out. Split button drop down. And this is how it's gonna look. And again, it works as the same way as we expected it to. So far, so good. Then we have the styling as well. So we can essentially style them to be of different sizes and uh, for that um, these are the classes that can be used so btn hyphen sm and uh, for this one btn hyphen lg so that essentially styles that then we have the drop up variation as well so it uh, opens up at the top and then we all we can also um, drop them out in the bottom we can align them uh, left or right we can also have drop down headers like so and then we have the dividers as well in here so uh, if that is something that you guys are looking for and then we have the regular uh, or disabled links as well in here in the drop down so again there are a few things that can be done is disabled and these are all the properties that can be used so drop up is a boolean which uh, essentially takes either true or false and um, opens the opens the drop down menu accordingly then we also have triggers and some output properties that can be binded to in here so that was all regarding uh, drop downs then we have input tags like here um, so i'm gonna go to this section right here and i'm gonna add in inputs uh, let's bring that to top let's save and in the input fields we have some basic input fields that uh, that are the basic signature um, material design input fields that we have so if i copy the markup paste it and um, add it here then i should see it as the basic example of input then we have also uh, small inputs and large inputs like so we also have uh, inputs with some icons on them so let's just copy this one and check uh, 
how this looks. Uh, this would be inputs with markups. Save. Go back to the application. And we see the icon as well for an envelope. Then we have some placeholder text that can be set using the placeholder just like for a normal input field. We have some uh, pre-filled input text that can be um, done using the value property. Then we have error or success messages uh, and we can essentially um, use things like min length and max length on them. Uh, min length and max length define the minimum maximum length of the inputs. Then we have data success and data error that provides a space to enter you custom errors or um, success messages if there are any. And then you also have validation types um, like for a for an email, for password and other things of that sort. And then you have disabled input fields as well that can be disabled using the class disabled right here. Then we have form layouts, different types of them, inline forms, then um, using the grid. So this is a grid form that you can see. And again, all the markups for all these types are given here on their website itself. Then we have check boxes and uh, uh, radio buttons essentially but these all come as a part of the material design bootstraps pro component package so we won't really be able to use it same is the case with radio buttons and the switches we just have the basic inputs but then again this comes as a part of uh, file input comes as a part of the pro package so we won't be able to use that as well and same is the case with range and uh, we have the counter field that is, I guess, free, so we can use that and the text area as well. But again, the autocomplete comes as a part of the pro package. So these are all the things that comes as a part of uh, the free material design uh, bootstrap package here. But then uh, there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of uh, paid things that we won't really be able to use. And that's where the angular material comes into the picture. So we saw uh, a lot of fields in here like uh, check boxes and radio buttons. Uh, let's see if uh, they are a part of this one. So if we have form controls, if we go over to say check boxes, we can see that check box comes uh, as a part of the material angular material package as well. But in this case, it's free of cost. So that is something that can be used instead of the uh, material design bootstrap package and same is the case with switches so if we go over to switch uh, let's say I'm not really sure where that can be found I guess it should be in buttons and indicators uh, button toggle okay apart from that we also have buttons uh, progress bars and progress spinners uh, that can be used and some other um, components as well of this sort that can again be used from this um, material design or angular material package. So for all these things that we have here, we will be using the uh, angular material uh, package. So we'll uh, in the next video see how exactly we can get started with the angular material package and uh, how exactly can we use the components that are exposed by uh, this module. I'll see you guys in the next video.